What is up? I am, uh, I'm happy as a piggy shit right now to be able to give you guys these videos because this is one of my favorite things. My favorite way, my favorite things of training since, since I was a little, little shit, middle school, actually sixth grade. My mother told me, um, so, uh, I was working out Buffalo, New York guys, cold ass weather. My ass was in the garage, freezing my ass off with about 20 layers <laughs> of, uh, of clothes on. Uh, punching a speed bag that my father put up for me and um, and working out with my dad's old weights that were actually, I don't know if you saw you guys are old bastards out there, uh, that were plastic that uh, were filled with cement. And a lot of the cement was pouring out the sides. They were chipped and busted and I kept doing it. And uh, I don't know how I got consistent on it enough, but I got it consistent on it enough to realize even at a young age, guys, the power of working out and being strong. I noticed it just, you know, aesthetically, which is a good reason for most people. Uh, my confidence, um, and I don't know where you grew up, but in Buffalo, guys, we got a lot of shit ton of fights. And I kicked a lot of ass back in the day, you know. Um, so besides that, guys, this is a good self-defense thing, and um, it's a great workout, guys. Uh, so I'm going to teach you not just boxing stuff, guys, but I want to break down boxing, guys, and, and show you how to do it without injuring yourself because you really can, guys, in a heavy bag. I got a light heavy bag here. Actually, this is a 40. I got a 100-pound uh, bag that I can knock the shit out of, and it's relatively cheap. So this setup right here probably cost me, <sighs> I want to say, less than 250 and which is a lot less uh, and, and a lot cheaper than your cardiovascular uh, machines out there, ellipticals and stuff. And guys, you're gonna, and, and girls, you're gonna love this. In fact, my females love this a lot more than my guys. Guys, I also, if you want to do one on one with me, guys, um, I do the mitts, and I am awesome with the mitts. Uh, boom, 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 and you can get a a, a, a killer workout with that. So I'm gonna teach you guys just a let's break up the, the foundation stuff of, of of boxing in this. And you can see guys, I'm in, I got a small room here. It's very tiny. I got my little Pilates reformer over there, my bands, my stepper. And um, my setup here is in the corner guys, but what I would like you to do is to pull that out in the middle so you can move around the bag a little bit more. You wanna be moving around the bag. I can't emphasize that enough because so many times over the years, I see somebody standing in the, in the, in the friggin' same place for 30 minutes hitting a bag. They're not even moving. Your feet, guys, are the hardest thing to get going, but they're also the most important thing. It's almost like dancing. How to move gracefully, how to keep your center of balance, your center of gravity around you, and how to move without tripping all over your ass, right? Aikido, actually, if you guys know Aikido, is basically how to throw somebody's center of gravity off of them. That you know your center of gravity so well, which I recommend you do. And in fact, Aikido is something that I've been studying as much as I possibly can right now. Because I believe it's one of the best things to know. To so let alone know my center of gravity is somebody else's, right? So if somebody throws a punch at me, a wild punch, and they're leaning forward, I can just sidestep them, pull them over, and watch them fall on their ass. And then if I wanted to, I could just kick the shit out of them all on the ground. I don't do that anymore. So, but I could just, if I ever was to get in a fight now these days, I'd probably throw them around so much, they'd just give up and be like, dude, this guy knows what he's doing. I'm not going to fuck with this person, right? Self-defense, guys, is good. You should know how to self-defend yourself. You should be able to teach your kids how to self-defense in case they need it. Because the, the, the opportunity is, guys, I don't care. Hey, I'm a teacher, and the shit happens. And they should be able to self-defend themselves. Not, 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 ever. My students always ask me, I don't know what it is about me. If they just see me, if they see my mu muscles and strength, and they ask me if I've ever gotten a fight, I don't know why they ask that. And now these days, guys, fighting really has... Because, it, because basically what happens is lawsuits. So I've been in a shit ton of fights. I mean, I'm probably over 100 back in the day when I was younger. My friends and stuff can admit this. And the best thing I could say is I've never, ever started a fight. Never. Some reason people always wanted to, and I never was one to back down from some jackass getting in front of me or, or being disrespectful to me or somebody else. Okay? So, um, guys, this setup is a good setup. I like the 40 pound guys, a hundred pound bag is good because it won't rock as much, but the lighter ones is guys is easier, especially if you don't know what you're doing, especially for females, right? So that they don't bust themselves um, up. Get yourself a pair of gloves, guys. I recommend um, either the MMA gloves because the best thing about these gloves, guys, is that you can um, 
get those wrists. You want to be able to um, get those wrists tied and, and also strengthen your wrists as human as much as possible, guys. I can show you exercises that that easy way, right? Dumbbells, right? All the movements have trained that those wrists and get those wrists stronger, guys. Push up exercise like that on your knuckles uh, with glass underneath it to toughen it up. I'm just bullshitting, right? <laughs> so um, over the years, guys, actually, I don't even use gloves really anymore, but I'm going to use them today um, because my damn knuckles are, are, are so uh, callous and everything that I don't really need to do it. I'm, I, I know how to hit that bag straight on, but I'm not tearing shit up. And that's another thing. You want to be able to hit that bag straight on and then you're not sliding your hand across it like sandpaper, right? Hitting it correctly. Um, and when we talk about hitting guys, that middle knuckle, that's where you want to be landing. You don't want to be here, guys. This is actually, if you hit here, you get what they call a boxer's fracture. So if I'm punching here, guys, that metacarpal right there, these are your metacarpals, will break very easily. And um, I actually had one injury with one of my clients and because I, I got sloppy with my cue, and the damn well never will happen again. That was probably about shit, 15 years ago. Um, so guys, do not, do not punch the shit out of this thing in the beginning. Technique first. Technique first, then, then, then worry about your speed and your strength and, and, hitting, and hitting this stuff, okay? All right, so guys, these are, I've got these, man, I got these when I was in Miami training a long time ago. So, um, let me show you the best thing about these guys is that long wrist thing, guys. And if you have like the, the bigger gloves, if I don't have them, okay, I'm looking up here in my closet and stuff. Um, I must have them in my car. So those, the, the bigger Everlast gloves, man, I thought I had them here. Never mind, I don't want to waste your time. But anyways, guys, look at how good I can wrist. So palms up or uh, open your palms. Wrap that, that bad boy nice and tight, right? Because a lot of the, um, the uh, Everlast gloves, guys, the, the boxing gloves, they don't have that. And I do recommend um, taping your hands. And I can show you guys how to do that too. Uh, just drop me a, a message in the comments. There's YouTube videos out there, guys, to show you how to do it. I got my own style of, of wrapping my hands and my client's hands and uh, what I feel works best, but uh, you just YouTube it. That's the best thing about YouTube, right? So, uh, but make sure you got somebody that knows what the hell they're doing. An easy way to just look at their background, okay? Um, I've talked about this before, guys. You want to be careful going into these boxing gyms because I used to work for them um, as a trainer. And I watched these uh, so-called people, uh, their instructor, which basically have that much experience taking people through uh, an advanced exercise. This is these are advanced exercises and stuff like this. You need to do this stuff properly and have a lot of experience to make sure that you're not doing and injuring yourself. Well, they have these people taking people through workouts where they're just popping their shoulders out. They're not using their hips, and they're going to run into problems. And they might not realize it right then and there, guys. Is but micro traumas happen, right? So if I'm in the gym and I'm rounded shoulders and I'm lifting heavy ass weight, like I see guys doing all the time, you know, my shoulder's not even in sit in his socket. I'm tearing shit up over and over again. It's usually not then and there. It's when they're in the car and they reach back behind them to go grab a, a, a backpack or something or their purse. And then their shoulder pops out of their socket and they're thinking, oh, that's what it was from. No, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. The same way I have clients that will say, you know, coach, I, I bent down to pick a pencil and my damn back popped. Well, it's probably because you, if you're, especially if you're in the gym, you're deadlifting wrong or doing something improperly or sitting on your ass for so long uh, with a rounded spine. And it finally was just like, it just gave up on you. Okay. So that's what they call micro traumas and they build and build and build. until, like I said, the straw that broke the camel's back, guys, get yourself a nice hat. You guys will always see me rocking a hat because it's, it's like my sweat catcher. I like to call it. Instead of wearing a stinking little bandana like a like a girl. All right. So anyways, guys, the feet, I can't emphasize the feet movement is huge. It's huge. You should practice your feet, 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 right? So the number one thing, guys, in a boxing thing is you want to get an athletic stance. Athletic stance is drop about six inches. Now I can move quicker, right? So if I'm slacked, if I'm not, uh, my knees are locked, 
it, I got to go down anyways and then move, right? So cut that out of there. That's why you see baseball players in athletic stance. A goalie soccer is, a, is another one too because he's ready to rock. He doesn't have to he's cut that down of that drop. Let alone, guys, same thing with baseball and all that thing. When I throw a punch, the power doesn't come from here. It comes from the ground up, my legs. Boom, right? Did you ever see a kid do this? I call them child rotations. I love it, and I actually do a lot of this with my clients and students warming up. But it's my hips. It's my movement of my feet, right? So I'm just slapping that thing, right? I think you guys might have missed that. So I'm just, right? And, and the thing is, is that my arms are just loosey-goosey. And here, here, look at Loosey goosey. I'm not even going to tighten this up. I'm just loosey goosey. Look how damn hard I can hit that thing. It's not anything going on. My, my shoulder is a limp noodle, and I just slap the shit out of this thing. I want you to think about this, guys. This is what I teach my baseball players, guys. Um, I've trained pitchers over the years. It's that whipping action. In fact, Bruce Lee talks about this, and this is where I've got a lot of my technique from. I basically took the Dao Ji Kune Do, put it in front of me, and read it and practiced it. Sat there. I ripped 20 pages out of that thing uh, back in the day, and I sit and, 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 oh, Bruce Lee, oh, snap your elbow up at the last second for, and then you, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Practice that, guys. And Bruce Lee, man, is, is somebody, I don't know, is, is not just an actor, man. He, this, Bruce Lee is the real deal. He's legendary. People will talk about him from 100 years from now. That's why how good this guy is. And he, he only lived till about 32 years old, which is crazy. But, uh, could you imagine if this guy was still around today? Man, I, I, got, oh, I wish he was. Because uh, the, the, the knowledge that he dropped already in just a small amount of time is, is, is ridiculous. Let alone the philosophies. I, I, I definitely recommend you guys read his quotes. His quotes and his philosophy on life is, is incredible. And you can understand why a 32-year-old man has left a mark on the world that will never be forgotten. So, um, limp. I am limp. And then, in fact, the last second, guys, and I want you to practice this, guys, I contract. So, that's advanced stuff, okay? So, so I want you just to get that in your head a little bit, right? And so, um, you can practice that. that so... You might want to, I, I, that's why I practice the, 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 the two inch punch, the three inch punch of snapping. So if I close my hand at the last second, you don't do this. If you're a beginner, do not do this, right? So I will actually, and that's why I want to make sure that if you guys, cause it's just automatic now for me and it's hard to break up, break that habit. So my hands will be open. And then at the last second I close because it gives it that snap whack like a whip. If I'm coming with you and I'm a whip, I'm whipping you, right? But it's like a, it's just going like this. But at the end, I tighten up that whip. I got it to the last second, right? That it's hitting you, not just like this, but that end. It's got you and it tightens up at that last second. Holy shit. You're going to get your ass not right? It's going to dig into your skin, open up and everything, right? And speaking of that, guys, when I hit the bag, I like to refer to it as a snake, when a snake strikes, it's A to B. It doesn't come out like this, right? Good. I, we used to, my, my boxing coach used to call that, call that thug punching, right? A thug punching is awesome. You just stand in the middle, ding, 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 and he ain't even going to get it off. By the time that he's going here, he's getting his ass knocked out, right? A to B. A to B. In fact, Jeet Kune Do is all about that, right? Jeet Kune Do is what's the simplistic movement and the easiest movement that I can deliver what I need to do at that time, not getting fancy. <laughs> Satori's ready to rock and roll too. That's my boxing partner right there. Um, she's uh, she's awesome. <laughs> so she likes to she likes to do the workouts with me. She might hit that bag too a little bit. So, anyways, guys, A to B. Um, I like to take my clients that are having a hard time that are thug punchers and put them up against the wall. So if this shoulder's up against the wall, they'll practice this. Another good thing, my boxing coach, I never really could understand it, is he used to, in front of the mirror, guys, because you can see what you're doing, um, which is good, or videotaping. So I'm, 
that's where I got into videotaping my clients because you'd videotape my feet and you'd say, Eric, you're, you're not on your toes. You're on your heels. And that's another thing, guys. You want to be on your toes. And again, for the fact that I can move in every direction quicker and then also the rotational part of it that you guys saw when I was doing the child rotations that I want to like a golf swing, right? I'm up on my toes and I'm not tearing that knee up. The knee, don't, the knee does not, the knee is a hinge joint, right? It doesn't rotate. So if I'm completely got my feet, guys, um, flat on the floor like that, right? Instead of being on my toes, allowing my hips to rotate, um, the, the knee will start doing that. And then you're going to start getting problems with the knee. You don't want to torque the knee, okay? So when I recommend guys doing, um, and if you have problems with that um, mobility in the hip, a lot of people lose that rotational mobility in the hip, which basically cuts your power down. If you lose that mobility in the hip, as a, this is basically throwing, throwing, a throwing motion. And so my, my pitchers and stuff, um, when I'm my, my baseball players, guys, is that they will basically throw their shoulders out, especially if it's not coming from the hip, if they lack the, that mobility. And actually the big toe um, should be able to be flexible enough to come up, they actually say 90, 90 degrees in order to get that bend. So if that big toe is tight and going like that, it now limits that, that hip rotation. And I don't wanna get too much into it, guys. But um, again, your starting video, guys, the feet position, guys, I'm on my toes. I am in athletic stance and I am turned sideways, right? For the reason that, uh, especially if I'm a male, right? I don't wanna, I don't, I, I don't wanna get kicked here, or punched there, or it's night, night, right? So, and a lot, uh, too, there's also less of me, right? So the, look at, look at how much there is to hit me if I'm coming at you like this, especially if I'm thug punching, right? So if I'm sideways, right, less of me to hit. And if I get hit here, right, and I, I got this protecting me, right, this isn't going to hurt getting hit in the arms as much as it's going to get hit in the rib cage, you know, or anything anywhere here, right? So be that, um, uh, pay attention to that. Keep that in your, in your mind. I always turn sideways, right? And so I practice the, the Jeet Kune Do stance, which is not your normal stance. So it's your boxing stance with this arm down and this hand up. So uh, most boxers, they, they're here. Right, so um, Jeet Kune Do is here, and I'll, um, I'll, 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 again, I'll explain a little bit more of that in depth of why I, I feel that that's better, um, why Bruce Lee feels that that's better, and stuff like that. Um, uh, boxing is very kind of robotic too. It's not something um, you want to have all these. The best thing Bruce Lee brought into the the martial arts world is a combination of right. So if I if I was just an, uh, somebody that practices the keto. Um, who's going to win? A guy that practices a keto compared to a guy that's practiced a keto, right? More than likely, the guy that knows the other thing, the other, other mixed martial arts that incorporates all things, like not just yoga, right? Um, but also strength training on top of that. That's the key, right? Bruce Lee did do, he did yoga. He was in the weight room. He did all that stuff. And so, again, not getting too carried away, but because if I practice the 100 martial arts, but I only practice it this much, yeah, the guy that's done a keto for a long time is probably going to kick my ass. It's that balance, right? So I don't want to, for you guys that are, are really into it, you guys, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. No, that's the key. That's why Bruce Lee basically is the legend, because um, these guys that were just kung fu artists, um, he, you know, that's good. But what about these guys that practice... Um, kickboxing, uh, um, Horace Gracie, right? When the MMA scene came down, guys, nobody did jujitsu. And so what, he, what did he do? He just got their asses on the ground and started snap, crackle, pop their joints and never lost a fight. And so then what it did is that these guys then had to start learning um, jujitsu and uh, the Gracie family is probably billionaires now because of that, of showing that aspect of it and training these guys that neglected that aspect of it because you know, the fight does go on to the ground and you've got to be able to learn, know what you're doing when you're on the ground because the guy that, that does, right? I don't care how big and bad you are. If a guy comes at you, he's a little guy, right? But he gets in inside and he gets you on the ground and knows how to manipulate your joints. It doesn't matter how hard you can punch, right? He's just, he's just going to take you down. The movement in boxing, guys, now, it really is dancing. It's awesome. I love about it because dancing, and I recommend 
dancing steps too. I dance all the time with my students. It's, it's a graceful and efficient way of moving the body, right? So, and plus it's fun as hell. And girls love a guy that can dance. All right, so anyways, the stepping movement is like a gallop. So a gallop is a step and kind of like a drag. I do not want to be picking my feet up marching, right? Because I'm knocked on my ass. I want to keep my center of gravity low. I want to keep my feet sliding. That's why those guys almost wear slippers when they're boxing, right? So that they don't have to pick their feet up off the ground. Because if I picked up my feet, the higher I pick them off the ground, the easier it was to knock me off and knock me on the ground. And if you're on the ground, guys, it's a very, uh, that's a bad position you want to be in. You don't want to be in there. So learn your center of gravity. I'm not forward, right? My center of gravity in between my feet right? I'm not leaning, my, getting too caught up. A, a rule of thumb, guys, is that I never want my center of gravity to go past my toes. In fact, I like to use the base of the toes is about as far as I go, right? So if I'm shifting my weight forward here, you feel like, okay, there's my toes. Get past the toes. Now start feeling like you're falling over, right? Same thing when you go backwards, all right? So remember that. Same thing, and now incorporate that into your workouts as well. It's a galloping motion. I'm, if I'm moving this way, this is where people have a hard time is side to side. It's a step and a slide. A good rule of thumb, guys, is you should be your foot distance apart, okay? I don't wanna get too caught up here, right? It's, it's hard to knock me down the bigger my, 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 the wider my stance, but it's also gonna be harder for me to throw faster punches, right? Because again, um, not only I wanna say again, I didn't say that, but the weight shifts. So when I shift my weight forward, all right, to my this hand, this hand is ready to go. When I shift the weight back, this hand's going. It's a weight shift, shift, right? So if I'm leaning forward, right, I don't want to be throwing this punch. And that's what most people that I've noticed my clients get caught into. They get too aggressive and they're just like, da, 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 right? Think of this in baseball. Ball is coming in, right? I'm here. I want to jack that thing for a home run, right? So I want my weight cocked back on this leg and then boom, right? If I'm leaning forward, I got nothing. But if I cock that weight, I load and explode, same thing, okay? If you're a righty now, and I, um, again, we'll, as we advance the, the workouts, uh, I'm going to train you always. You should always balance everything out. You got a kid that's a uh, football a quarterback. He throws 20 times with his right. Have him throw 20 times with his left. Soccer player is huge too. Kick 20 times with your right, 20 with your left. Everything even, guys. That's how the body works and is more, more efficient should be. So what if I got turned around if I was in a fight? Okay, let alone that, I'm not going to create muscular imbalances. I want to balance the yin and the yang, guys. The yin and the yang. Okay, so practice moving around, the, right? Practice moving around, step slide, step slide, step slide, step slide, step slide forward, gallop backs, right? On my toes. You're gonna to be tripping all over your damn self when you realize that. A good, uh, what I've done in the past is I actually laid string down and rope and um, had my client straddle it, and then I can weave it in, curve it, make it a zigzag pattern and whatnot. So they get used to moving and keeping that space because what you'll find is that your either feet are going to be, if your feet are together, guys, right? It's easy for me to knock you over. If you're locked, not locked, if your knees are locked, easy for me to knock you over. Your center of gravity, guys, should be as low as possible and slightly forward. Slightly forward. Now remember that too throughout the day. When you're sitting, it should be low as possible, slightly forward. When you're working out, uh, lower your center of gravity slightly forward. That's um, people will call that grounding, um, laying the roots down, right? Like a plant. So it's easier. And there's some martial artists that you can't even knock them over, right? As you've seen these guys, they're literally supernatural. It's crazy because the, 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 the way they train and have done it smartly, it's, it's crazy what some of these guys are capable of doing. And some of this stuff you can see on YouTube. Look up more Shai Oshiba, the, the, the founder, founder of uh, Aikido, and watch him when he's like, I think he's 70 some years old, tossing these big dudes around like, like nothing. They couldn't even touch him. In fact, all he's known for is that when his students used to live with him and they would try to sneak up on him at night and nobody ever was able to do that. He just could sleep and sense the world and say, think about that. That's crazy. 
Um, but he practiced that. His senses and stuff were so keen and he knew the body so well that he was able to do that and manipulate other people's bodies as, as well. To the fact that Aikido has no aggressive strikes, it's all defensive. So that I just basically use that person's movement and their center of gravity against them. So you could have a 100 pound female tossing around a 350 pound guy, right? Whatever there's a force is an equal and opposite force. So if I have 350 pound guy, right, I have 350 pound, the, the opposite direction and they use that against you. So the bigger the person, they actually you have way more force to um, go in that opposite direction and toss their ass around like a, like, like a feather, which is crazy. That's why I love a keto guys. It's always, always kind of saying, where's your center of gravity? Is it all on my right foot? Is it on my left? When people just stand, same thing. Okay, so get used to moving forward and backward. In this small room, I might just go two steps forward, two steps back, two steps to the side, two steps to the other side, right? And then when you got the bag, what I like to do with my clients is take that poke, boom, take a step, or take two steps, go all the way around, hit it again. Do not be that ding bat knucklehead that just sits on that one side and just is just sitting in one spot and not moving the body. Move the body. Move, 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 right? Another thing is, guys, we do not want to be throwing punches while we move, okay? Lay the base down, throw, then move. I don't want to be stepping and throwing a punch, right? Okay? You'll usually get caught and then get in trouble. Now, you probably see some MMA guys in their fights where they, and maybe they've intellectually and mentally realized, okay, that was the best hit for them, but it's rare. And if you miss that hit and he's got comes back at you and you're stepping, right, that foot's off the ground, you're going to get caught. In fact, if, like for what I've realized over in life, a counter punch is the way to go. So if I was ever getting a fight, I would just tease the motherfucker. I got to watch my mouth. I would get that person going so much to have them throw a punch because it's easier for me to just watch, get to block that punch and then unload. And you see what everything else opens up, right? Or I can move and in fact, my, my, my boxing coaches always say that. You got a big guy, get, 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 you, get behind him and who can defend themselves there and just start working on those kidneys and the liver and everything like that, right? So, um, and, and guys, I know I'm being aggressive and talking about that stuff, but we want to treat this like real life, right? This is, right? This is a person. That's what it's supposed to mimic. There's their face, right? There's the side of it. There's that liver shot, right? We give somebody a shot in the liver, they're gonna crumble like a, like a stack of cards. Yeah, and you've seen people do that. Just like my, my father, remember, he's because again, he re realized that he teaches sons how to, how to defend themselves, which was great because I had to do it a lot of damn times, okay? And so, um, you know, we say, why would you wanna chop the top of the tree when you got the trunk? which makes a ton of sense because most people just go for the head, which is the hardest thing to hit, right? Especially you got somebody's hand here, bing, 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 bing. You start hitting that bottom because they don't know how to protect themselves. You start hitting in here and most guys do not work their core. What I would go for with these big ass guys is their legs. I just would start kicking the hell out of the legs because their legs are so freaking sticks and their upper body is so damn big, right? Why hit that big upper body and their core is probably weak too. That's why you want to balance, guys. The plant is as only as strong as its roots. And guys just neglect it. And females over neglect it, right? It's all they do is ass workouts. And um, they're not balancing the opposite side of that stuff, too. It is a balance. And you want to train the balance. Let's start off with the jab, guys. The jab, again, my back. I want you to, like, uh, remember the pirate ride, guys? Whoa, way in the fair. And go back. So shift the weight back. Right, and then as I get forward, not into my toes, as I get forward, I'm gonna use my momentum and my hips. Let's see this hip turning, right? I wanna punch with my hips. Again, my, my, my child rotations, get back to that. Warm yourself up with that, get used to it, right? And then just use the minimal amount of contraction of keeping it tight. Of what do I need to do to keep it tight, right? And, and again, not tensing up here. Most people tense up here and they wonder, do not be like this. You've got to have that posture up. Look at my shoulders not even sitting in its socket. And I'm punching here with my shoulders. If, the, if you start getting tired with the hips, guys, the easiest thing is, is videotape yourself or have somebody watch you, right? So this is just me with my shoulders, 
right? But this is me with my hips. Notice the hips moving. Same thing with a baseball bat, right? If I'm just doing this, I got nothing. But if I put the hips into it and I drive up off the ground and I'm not, because I'm, I'm coming from athletic stance, I'm going to have more pop into it. Like a snake, A to B. A to B, don't come out. And like a snake is not going to dig its ass in you, right? When a snake hits a hits a, a, a rat, when a rat's got some sharp-ass teeth, he doesn't want to get his damn neck bit off, right? When he's sinking his teeth in there. So he's going to go in. This is going to keep you from hurting yourself. I remember a lot of my females, they have a lot of aggression in them. They want to just sink it in there, sink it in there. And they're going to kill themselves, guys. Do enough. You, if you're sinking this thing in, uh, a, you know, half an inch, just think with that. If I hit somebody in the jaw and it sinks in a half an inch, they, they're, they're going to be all effed up, right? So that's all I want to do. I don't want to sink in too much and then also get myself caught off guard, right? Or you're going to be tearing stuff up. Don't be sinking it in. Get what you need to do and come back, right? And I want to come back as fast as I go out. So the hands always come back to the face. Easier one, guys, start in boxing things. This, right here, the cheek. I punch, boom, come back. Punch, come back. Use the mirror, like my boxing coach told me. All right, so jab and a cross. That's all we're going to do today. I want you to just practice those two punches. Why get into the more advanced stuff? The stuff that might bust you up, the harder things. Just jab. A jab is your front hand, right? That leads everything else, too. And I want to make sure I got my distance, guys, on this, right? I don't want to be caught here, so I want to be here, right? Where that, and it's almost like a tricep. It's literally a tricep whack, right? More so than a bicep. It's like that tricep, an extension, right? Yep, that extension, okay? All right, so, and then boxing, and we'll, we'll get into this, too, a little bit. Um, later down the line about just punch a, a, a lead punch, which is right there. But at boxing, guys, let's stick with the boxing right now. I'm actually going to turn my knuckles up and hit. Okay. And again, that little bit of rotation. Guys, clench your hands. The best thing about like this, if you can see that, it's almost like uh, I remember back in the day getting fights too, guys would have rolls of quarters in their hands because it does. It, you get hit with that, you can, you can get, it'll eat you up. But pretend you got those roller clear tight hands. The tighter your hands, the better on your wrists. Do that in the beginning. Because if you're sloppy and relaxed here, guys, and don't do what I told you in the beginning about that. And like I just wanted to tell you that because if you see me doing that, it's just natural for me to have my hands open and closed the last second. Okay? But have that tight, the tight fist when you're going. Punch, come back, take a step. Punch. Take a step, all right? I want to move back a little bit. I'm too tight, right? Do not knock the shit out of this thing. I like the lighter bags for that reason because it, it, they really, it moves a lot. And you don't want that thing moving too much. If this thing's moving a lot, especially if, you guys have that, if you do have a 100-pound bag and that's coming this way, it's swinging towards me, and that's when I hit it, you're probably going to mess your wrist up. Try not to hit the bag when it's coming towards you. Get out of that habit, guys, unless you're... And again, advanced person. Again, you guys, this is strictly for beginners and stuff like this, this video. Um, don't punch it when it's coming towards you, okay? Move. Move your body more. Get used to moving your feet more than just than the punching. Practice in the mirror. Straight. Straight, right? Jab. So, when we get into the video, guys, a one is a jab. That means you're one punch, right? Your first jab. One, your jab always starts every punch. Okay, so if I say one, boom, right? If I got the mitts up, I say one, boom, right? So, uh, and you watch, you guys, if you, I'm telling you if, you, if you ever work with somebody with the mitts, it's a lot more fun than this, and it's a lot less likely of you um, beating the shit out of your shoulders um, because you can just get nuts with it, guys. And I'll, um, I'll get to get one of my clients. I think I've posted a video of uh, one of my female clients and me working on the mitts on my Instagram. So you guys can check that out on there. Just go down and you'll, you'll see uh, me and one of my badass clients. She, she hits like a guy. So, uh, right. So um, get, find your distance up here. 
athletic stance, hip, right? So hip, come back, right? Shift your weight back, shift forward, right? So if I said one, 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 a one and a one. It doesn't have to be boom, 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 just that fast. If you want to, you, yeah, that's camp. But I can stagger that, that timing, which is good because it throws people off, right? So if I'm one and a one, okay, or one and a one, right? So I'm hitting it a little bit too hard. Sorry. So one, right? There we go. Middle knuckle, middle knuckle, middle knuckle, middle knuckle, right? If you take your gloves off and that middle knuckle is red right there. I have had females, guys, literally, um, it's just more sensitive than guys, with a big box, a big ass balloon gloves. I don't recommend you guys get that. I want to do another video where I show you guys the, the boxing gloves I'm talking about because there are some boxing gloves that are just way too damn big and they just, it's hard to, hard to even see, right? So one is, boom, a two now, okay, a two. All right, so that's my jab. So if I said jab, 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 one, one jab, okay? Get used to that, that the name. This is my right cross. My cross now, guys, is that, again, I wanna shift, put my, my weight, when my weight is back on this foot, and the same thing, when I'm stepping, that's my, my foot. If you notice, Bruce Lee will actually, he's just constantly, and this is, you'll notice me doing that a lot, is this, load, 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 right cross, jab, right? So constantly, you see him like that because it's just, he's just, load, 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 right? And he's not stepping. Um, and boxers, you know that, right? When he's coming forward, he's mostly going to throw that jab, right? If he steps back, he's got the, the right cross. He's loaded that. If he steps to the right, that's that right. Steps to the left, right? So um, Bruce Lee is constantly stepping. Bah, 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 right? Load, 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 right, 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 left, right, 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 left. So you never know what's going. His biggest thing was like, you're constantly trying to fake the other person out and let, let them know what they're doing. So he'd be constantly like doing stuff like that. Oh, look over here. Well, you think it's just a, a mind scramble and, and with his eyes too, all right? Of faking you out with his eyes. So the right cross guys is gonna be, of course you're more, you're, now you wanna be careful of hitting it hard, especially that right cross and, and hit it right. Your jab should be just as strong as your, your, your cross. If you dude, if you got a hard jab, you knock them out with the jab, right? Because it's A to B. It's the fastest one. It's right here. It's right in the front. Bah, 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 bah. Right? That's your lead punch too, right? Which is a little bit faster than the boxing punch. But let's stick with the boxing where you're going to turn your knuckles up. My right cross. So it would be a two. A two is, all, again, always start with your jab, right? So uh, uh, everything follows that. A two would be a jab cross. Two punches, right? Two. Two. Right cross. Right cross. Right cross. Right cross. Two. 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 Got it? Right? Notice I'm not hitting that thing as much as I, hard. Don't hit it hard. And then two, because what you're going to do is you'll be chasing the damn bag. Right, which is good later on when you get to, you want to be hitting a moving target. But again, you're going to be wasting a lot of time trying to settle the bag down and, and things like that. All right, right cross two. All right, I do recommend if you want, switch your stance and already start practicing in that opposite stance. Okay, for most of you, it's going to be whack because boxing, if you ever see a million dollar baby with, uh, Clint Eastwood and Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's constantly talking about how everything in boxing is backwards, right? Because most likely, and I agree, Bruce Lee agreed that you have more power hand, so I'm a righty, should be in front. Um, I'm so used to it with my left being in front, that's a little bit more comfortable than me, but I'm comfortable either way, all right? And that's where you want to get to that, that point too, okay? So switch your stance, practice one, one, two, one, two. Okay, um, there's some videos online where they actually will call out those things. A wonderful app my, my, uh, one of my clients had where it's a boxing app and they'll uh, call out one, jab, two, right? And do that. And I'm going to be doing that for you too, but I'll make sure that you guys are doing it properly. So with that being said, I don't want to wait this video too long, guys. Practice your footwork, moving side to side, backwards, right? 
and keeping that distance in between your feet. That's where you want to start. That's a great place to start is the, the footwork, guys, is huge. you got to be able to, if you just can't, can't move and you're stumbling over your feet, this is it. Any of this stuff up here ain't going to do shit, okay? Namaste, y'all.